Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles, where we have not one, but two battles for you today, mostly because they don't last particularly long, uh, courtesy of Billy Butcher here. Both games in the Austrian Tier 5 Premium Battleship, the Veribus Unitus. This first battle is an all Tier 5 battle. It's a domination mode battle on the straight map. Billy Butcher here, obviously a really big fan of either The Boys on Netflix or the original Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson comic strip. Both are good, but the comic strip is better. I know, I know, you hear pompous hipster twats saying that sort of thing all the time. Well, yes, the TV show slash movie was alright, but the book was far superior. But in this case, it really is true. There's been more than one small or big screen adaptation of Garth Ennis's comic strip work, and they've usually been pretty good. The Keanu Reeves Constantine movie, for example, The Boys, which we've already mentioned, and of course the Preacher TV series. But in each and every case, the original comic books are very definitely superior. Oi, stop your rambling, old man. This is World of Warships. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, anyway, Verbus Unitus. It's a premium tier 5 European battleship. It's actually the first dreadnought of a class of four that were constructed in the very first years of the 20th century for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Yep, that's right, Austria. Not particularly well known as a naval power, but in the opening years of the 20th century did actually have a fairly strong navy. They've done a pretty good job of replicating her armament, although it isn't exactly the same here in World of Warships as it was in real life. She has the 12 305mm or 12 inch guns that the ship was historically on with, arranged in four triple turrets, two forward, two aft. She also has the 12 150mm secondaries that the actual ship was armed with, but she doesn't quite have all of the 70mm secondaries that she was armed with. She does have 70mm guns, but she doesn't have 12 of them, and they're not secondaries. As built, the Viribus Unitus also had 12 70mm secondaries and three 66mm anti-aircraft guns. Here in World of Warships, she has four 70mm anti-aircraft guns and no 66mm guns, and that's probably because the secondaries 70mm guns would have been largely useless wouldn't have been good for anything other than setting fires. Following the 1 6th caliber penetration rule for anything that isn't German or Japanese destroyers armed with 100mm guns, the 70mm secondaries on the Viribus Unibus would have only been able to penetrate, at best, 12mm of armour. So, in other words, they would shatter on everything. The ship was also equipped with torpedo tubes, which, sadly, it doesn't get in World of Warships. Oh, Billy just scored his first Citadel on the Katowski. The Katowski saw what was coming and managed to angle away enough that he didn't get hit by most of those 12 shells. But don't worry, that Citadel is the first of many, because this is a Tier 5 battle. It's exclusively Tier 5. There's only Tier 5 ships on both sides. No Tier 4s, no Tier 6s. And all of those cruisers are Tier 5 cruisers. And, you know, what happens to Tier 5 cruisers when they get shot at by, well, anything. Oh, that, by the way is the first and I think only example that you're going to see in this game of somebody shooting at a battleship when there were tier 5 cruisers available for them to shoot at instead. Treasure that moment, because it's the last time you're going to see it. But yes, you should all know by now what happens to tier 5 cruisers when they get shot at by just about anything. They tend to react. Hang on, is he going to make a liar of me and shoot at that Kirishima again? No, he's not. <laughs> He's going for a Tier 5 cruiser instead. Admittedly, he only has three of his four turrets with the clearance to shoot at the cruiser, and he is reserving a fourth turret for the Kirishima, but I'm going to take it. That one, that one counts. And I will, I swear, get this sentence finished. Because we all know what happens to Tier 5 cruisers when they get shot at by just about anything. They all do their best impression of a British battle cruiser exploding violently at the Battle of Jutland. Because Tier 5 cruisers have no armour and they're made out of citadels. Now this is true of a lot of Tier 6 light cruisers as well, but it's true of all the cruisers at Tier 5, even the heavy cruisers like the Furataka. 
The fur attacker does have enough belt armor that if sufficiently angled, it can take its chances with incoming large caliber armor piercing, but that is not a fur attacker. Well, that's not anything now. <laughs> you see, the thing about tier 5 cruisers is that they all universally have such terrible armor that anything heavy cruiser or bigger is capable of overmatching the bow and stern armor. Anything armed with a 203mm gun can punch through that bow and stern armor as if it wasn't there. And that's when you're actually trying to avoid incoming fire. The Katowski over there didn't learn his lesson from the first Citadel that Billy delivered to him. And, um, yeah, there's his second devastating strike. He has taken a lot of fire here, but you'll know it's not from any of the enemy battleships. It's all the cruisers. He did get a double fire set. He's used the damage control. And if he doesn't want to get set on fire again with his damage control on cooldown... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What do you think? Devastating strike number three? Surprisingly, no. <laughs> he was robbed. How do you pronounce the name of that thing anyway? Because I'm normally pretty good with the pronunciation of Dutch ships, having lived in South Africa for a while. But that one defeats me. Is it Celebes or Celebes? Come on, Cloggies, let me know in the comments. You're the experts. Oh no. Oh, woe is me. Billy's run out of tier 5 cruisers to shoot at. He has no option but to shoot at the other battleships now. And you may be sitting there thinking, well, hang on a minute, he's given a flat broadside to pretty much all three of those enemy battleships. Well, yeah, but he's in no physical danger whatsoever. Because there's a couple of tier 5 cruisers for those guys to shoot at. So they're never going to shoot at him as long as there's a tier 5 cruiser available. In fact, there's two of them. There is an Omaha and another one of those Dutch things. And as long as they're still alive, Billy Butcher is in no danger whatsoever from any of those three surviving enemy battleships. What, you don't believe me? Okay. Watch and see. Who are they all shooting at? Because it's not hidden. <laughs> hmm. Enemy destroyer, Sirocco, in the central cap, just finished off. He's around there still somewhere, and there's a big, fat, juicy battleship here for him, and he did just finish off, I think it was the Podvoisky? One of the team's destroyers. He's clearly in there because the cap's being flipped. So... In what would probably be a suicidal tactic in a higher tier game, Billy's just sitting here, farming those battleships and using the island ahead of him to shield him from any torpedoes that may have been launched by the Sirocco. And he's in no danger. And he's probably going to get a kill on the ARP Kirishima. Yeah, I'd say that was a kill. That was a kill. Fairly predictable kill, but a kill nonetheless. And that just leaves the Britannia, the French Tier 5. And, well, let's face it, one thing that that ship is not short of at the moment is enemies. So, having done his job down at this end of the map, and conscious of the fact that there is an enemy destroyer very close, he's reloading the high explosive, and he's heading up to that central cap. Oh, sure enough. Here come the Sirocco torpedoes. One set of three, but the Sirocco has two triple launchers, so there's going to be another set of three ready and available. And based on the fact that the Sirocco came from the north, capped, and then the torpedoes came around the side of the island, yep, there he is. Remember, he's French, so he doesn't have a smokescreen. And his concealment isn't great. Oh, how terrible. Remember, he has to stay within seven kilometers. Well, not remember, because I haven't actually said this yet, but he has to stay within seven kilometers if he wants to torpedo anybody. And Billy, perhaps anticipating finishing him off with the first 12 shot HE salvo, has switched back to arm piercing. Yep, that was the second torpedo launch. Sliding harmlessly by, but well, these are 12 armor piercing shells. So yeah, only a couple were required to finish the job. I'm surprised that for... Oh, no, wait, he has just died. 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, the southern end of the map has now been completely cleared of enemy ve vehicles. Well, yeah, ships are vehicles, I suppose. That's not really what you, not really the word you would use, but I've used it now, so I'm kind of committed. Um, the only thing surprising about that was that he didn't take down one of those tier five cruisers with him. Oh, speaking of which, hello, Omaha. <laughs> They never learn, do they? <laughs> oh wow, he survived! Shocking! There's the high caliber award, by the way, and he managed to sneak Confederate in there when we weren't looking. And the Omaha's not even turning away. Well, to be fair, it doesn't matter. Billy can overmatch him from any angle, so turning away wouldn't help. He is in fact doing the best thing that he can do, which is try to run for cover and get behind the island. But he's a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> There's the Kraken unleashed and another devastating strike. And the fun isn't over yet because the enemy team do still have two tier 5 cruisers. Although Billy can't actually see any of them at the moment, so there's a. Wait. Is that an Omaha? Oh, that's another Omaha. <laughs> You can see Billy's thought process here. Broadside battleship or bow-in cruiser. It's got to be the bow-in cruiser, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Shots out. And kill number six. Hang on a second, Jingles. You just promised us that nobody was going to be shooting at any battleships as long as there were any tier five cruisers around for them to be shooting at. Somebody just shot at Billy. And there's still at least four cruisers available for those guys to be shooting at. Well, yeah, that's true, but that doesn't mean they can see them. The two cruisers to the south are too far away, and the two cruisers up to the north are both keeping their distance, so it's entirely possible that right now, Billy is the lowest health visible target available to be shot at. Visible targets which right now, as far as the enemy team are concerned, consist solely of battleships. He's going for that... Uh, I still don't know how you pronounce it. Celebes? Oh, and he didn't kill it. Well, that was kind of surprising. It hasn't gotten away yet, though. <laughs> Shot out. <laughs> and... Oh, my lord. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> uh, kill number seven. Uh, the enemy team have now run out of cruisers. They're about to run out of battleships. And uh, Billy's team is about to run out of Billy. He's got two fires, he's on low health, he's still getting shot at, his damage control's on cooldown, his heal's on cooldown. But it doesn't matter. Because his work here is complete. Or is it? I mean, you know, he's been sunk. He's managed to do 146,000 damage. And seven kills in a tier 5 battle. The seven kills is, well, it's not unimpressive, but it's not exactly unprecedented. But 146,000 damage at tier 5 is pretty impressive. But he is not done. I mean, he's done for this battle, obviously. He's sinking. But he was so pleased with his experience here in the Verbus Unitus that he decided to have another roll of the dice and hit that battle button again. Only this time, he got into a tier 6 battle. A tier 6 battle with an aircraft carrier and only two tier 5 cruisers on the enemy team for him to bully into submission but well i know i keep going on about how ridiculously fragile tier 5 cruisers are because they are tier 6 light cruisers they're not that much tougher hell even tier 6 heavy cruisers like the alba are not that much tougher because the difference between a light cruiser and a heavy cruiser is all about the caliber of the guns it's got nothing whatsoever to do with the thickness of the armor and tier 6 light cruisers like the nuremberg for example are almost as notorious for exploding in a ball of flame when they get looked at as the omaha is at tier 5. oh well, look there's a nuremberg over there you'll uh, have to take my word for it World of Warships bugged replay system is still bugged, and uh, don't worry, I'll notice in a moment. There's a sort of grim inevitability. <laughs> to watching a cruiser of any description 
but especially light cruisers show broadside when a battleship has already aimed at them. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh look, there's another one. And this is one of the tier 5s. Again, you're going to have to take my word for it. Well, that's the Katowski. And, well, we all saw how well the Katowski did when it gave broadside like that to the Verbus Unitus in the previous battle. And there's kill number 2. And Citadel number 5. The game has just started, he's already up to 36,000 damage, and he's killed something every time he's fired the guns. And these aren't kill steals. And yes, I did just fix the interface bug through the power and magic of video editing while nobody was looking. Meanwhile, Butcher's Boy is uh, lining up for his next victim. Hang on a second, this can't be right, that's not a cruiser. What's going on? Come along now, William. You know the rules as well as everyone else. You can't be shooting at battleships when there are cruisers available, like the fur attacker over there. No, don't look at the Ismail. Billy, don't do it. That's my boy. Uh, no, don't worry about the Hatsuharu. Oh, look, you see what happened? You dithered about it and the fur attacker went undetected. On the bright side, you're also undetected, but you're probably not going to remain undetected for too long, because when you come around the side of that island, there is a Hatsuharu, who I believe sank a friendly Icarus in that cap circle, and is now flipping it. I'm actually quite surprised he hasn't reloaded the high explosive. He did earlier, in the previous battle, when he was expecting to run into a Sirocco. Question is, can he catch this Hatsuharu before he finishes flipping the cap? even though this is terribly bad form because the Hatsuharu, as I'm sure you're all aware, is not a cruiser. Still, close enough for government work. So that's three. Now, about there he is. You see, if you're patient, the tier five cruisers will come to you. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You see, he doesn't want to stay in open water with a battleship looking straight at him, but on the other hand, if he wants to get behind that island, he's not going to be able to manoeuvre too much, because he wants to get behind that island as soon as he possibly can. He may have the 10km torpedoes, in which case Billy might be in some trouble. But not as much trouble as the... Uh, yep, there it is. <laughs> not as much trouble as the fur attacker is in. Not a kill, however. Because it is the Furious Taco, it is the most heavily armoured of the Tier 5 cruisers, and is able to bounce some armour-piercing shells, at least, with relatively little angling, particularly when the battleship shooting at you is armed with only 12-inch guns, as is the Viribus Unitus. But now that the Fur Attacker has avoided instant destruction, what does he do? He's gotten behind the island, he's managed to go undetected. That's right! <laughs> I swear you couldn't make this shit up. Oh, I got a big old spank in there when I showed broadside to that battleship, but now I've gone undetected and I'm behind the island. I know what I'll do. I'll drive out and show broadside to that battleship again, except this time at even closer range. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, I wouldn't want to be in that uh, Ismail now. Because unfortunately for him, there are no visible cruisers for Billy to shoot at. I mean, there's one down to the southwest, but it's got a whole bunch of islands in the way, so, yeah. Fortunately, the Ismail does have visible cruisers to shoot at. <laughs> so, he wasn't even pointing his guns at Billy, because he knows the rules as well as I do. And of course, because Billy managed to get the kill there without taking any damage whatsoever, he didn't get his capture process. Or process? Progress. Yeah, progress is the right word. Whatever it was, he didn't get it reset. So, in a battleship, he's now flipping a cap. So that's nice. And Oh, look, there's the enemy carrier. Now, I have often thought that the hangars on carriers should count as citadels, given that they're full of aviation fuel and explosives. But no, that might mean that carriers actually take damage when people shoot at them, so you have to do what Billy just did and actually hit the Citadel. Four times. <laughs> the, uh, the Furious is aware that there's an island right there he could be hiding behind, right? Maybe power up the engines and move? I mean, you do understand there is a, 
a fairly major and fundamental difference between an aircraft carrier and an airfield. Yeah, one of them can move, the other one can't. No? Okay, fine. Billy doesn't care either way. There is, of course, another major difference between an aircraft carrier and an airfield. At least in theory, you can sink an aircraft carrier. You can't sink an airfield. Although the Japanese certainly tried at the Battle of Midway, uh, when they spent the first half of the battle trying to do exactly that. Meanwhile, <laughs> still following the rules, still trying to get the kite going, and probably would have if somebody hadn't knocked off one of the enemy battleships and reduced the enemy team to zero points. <clears throat> so, that was Mrs. Butcher's boy with more than a quarter of a million damage and 13 kills inflicted over the course of two matches, which at tier 5 is pretty damn impressive. None of which, of course, would have been possible without the assistance and cooperation of all of those enemy cruisers. And on that bombshell, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.